Hey guys, I know it's been a few days since I made a video and I'll tell you what's been going on while uh, we're working on this, but as for this, I made a video on this thing last summer. This is an H9880 uh, bell wagon or some of the terminology used, bell wagon or uh, harrow bed, uh, hay stacker, whatever you want to call it in your part of the country, I guess. Anyway, um, what's that all about there? Where is that coming from? Hmm, interesting. Huh, it's kind of weird. It must be, I don't understand where that grease is coming from. Anyway, must be something in, there must be something in here. Bell cushion control. Is that wet in there, in this frame? And it's leaking out here somewhere? Kind of looks that way, doesn't it? Huh. Anyway, uh, kind of got a little bit off topic here when I seen that. But last summer, this thing, it's got a huge valve block over there. There's a lot of hydraulics on these things. Uh, a little bit of explanation as to the way this works. Now, I used to spend a lot of time on these when I was a young man. I um, was pretty familiar with the 10, up to the 1095. This is an H9880. This is the one... The BW28 was after the 1095. They started out in numerical sequence that I remember. There was a 1048, and the old 1048s had wooden side racks on them instead of these steel side racks. And the 1049s, they went to the 1049s. And a lot of the 1040, some of the 1049s had steel, and some of them had wood. And then we went to 1065s. When we went to 1065s, we were thought we were shitting in tall cotton because they had under the set. This is the second table. Under the second table, they had a cam, and you had a automatic function or a manual. You had a toggle switch and a button that you could move the cam to whatever steer, uh, whatever stack pattern you wanted. Uh, the old 1048s and 1049s, all they would do is flat. I don't remember if they do the edge or not. I think they just loaded them flat. You got eight flat on the second table, and that's what you had. And the bad thing about that, when you stack your this whole load rack, will tip back. Okay, and then the block of hay stands on end, and these push-off feet will extend out and shove the bell wagon away from the hay. I saw guys back in the Midwest that were still hauling hay by hand, and I was like, wow, these guys are way behind. Why the hell are you hauling that by hand? Anyway, uh, so 1065, 1065 had a bunch of paddles on the on the table this is all electronic now you'll see all these magnetic sensors here and that's how all these work off those magnetic sensors anyways um the the old 1065s had ta paddles and if you lifted the second table up you'd see linkage all underneath that thing and those paddles ran the valves because when i was young and dumb and full of you know what I was a young man and we would I was yeah, I took chances as a young man and, and my grandpa always warned me He always told me don't you leave the, this arm right over here now the arms on the old ones that got in the cab When you let this arm down it does two things it's supposed to and I just kind of noticed that on this one here that there should be a hydraulic spring-loaded hydraulic brake on well, they're putting disc brakes on these now. So I'm not sure how the park brake's supposed to... Is there a park function? I don't think there is a park function on the transmission. Oh, shit, there is a park in it. Ding dong. There's a park right there. So there's a park paw in it. Never mind. The old 1095s, they didn't have park. They just had neutral. And then what happened is, is when you let the arm down you took power away from a solenoid and that solenoid, once it was de-energized, it ported, I can't remember if it was normally open or anyways, it, it took the oil away from the pot. This, instead of having, you know, you guys have seen maxi brakes on a, on a truck that you push air, when you push the knob in, it applies air to release the brake. Same principle, when you, when you have this arm up, on the 1095 i'm not sure how this one's working well you don't need it you got you got park lock so but on the old 1095s they didn't have a park lock and when you pulled that up you were actually putting oil to them pots back there to release the brakes 
and when you put it down because we were we were dumb and dumb kids and we were always screwing around and we would pull up there just slow enough in the dirt and we'd pull that up and watch the tires lock up being idiots you know now that you're young older and you go man that was really stupid tearing stuff up like that but anyways um so uh 1065s were all manual and then instead of having a coil back there and a valve block that ran this it was an arm and linkage everything was linkage and all those paddles ran valves to control uh when the table would go up and when you had whatever stack pattern you're on so anyway uh, i was young and i would leave this lever up on the 1065s because the hydraulics would be on and sometimes you kind of needed it to be on uh, I, I don't remember why to be completely honest with you hang on so anyway before the phone rings i got a backhoe some guy bought it at an auction and He's bringing it over. We got to drag it off the trailer. But anyway, um, everything on these is electronic and electric over hydraulic coils for solenoids, things like that. Modern day technology. Uh, the old ones, you know, you can the these new ones here. The you can get more hay in the back. The old 1065s. I think all we all we could haul was those. Yeah, all we could haul was a nine high. And then the, I think the 1075s. You could do a ten high. Now the I think these do an 11 or 12 high so you can haul quite a bit of hay with these but this one here is actually what got what they call a mill stack on it that's a big bale uh, that's a big bale loader so this one's still got some hydraulic issues it worked for second and third cutting this one had an orifice that come out of the bottom of the valve block that i had found and uh it was gone and i told them i said i don't know how long it's going to work and they said why and i said well Obviously, there's an orifice floating around in the hydraulic system somewhere. So, I don't know if that's what's causing our issue or not. i got to get my dog out of there so she don't get smashed. Cause we gotta, we got to let this mill stack down. Come here, chicky. Okay, just run from me then. Okay. She's fixing to go to doggy school to quit learning how to do that. To learn how to come when she's cold. She's kind of a bullhead. You're kind of a bullheaded little son of a gun, aren't you? Yeah, I sure love her, but she's she just needs to learn. I'll try to go pick her up, and she'll take off running from me. What are you doing? You're right in the path of where this is going to come down. In the worst spot in the world, that's where you're at. Mm -hmm. Let me get her rounded up. There it goes. Second table up. And remember which button to push. Nope. It's not doing it. There we go. Okay. Second table's up. Now that we got that up out of our way, get Josie down here. Ah! So, safety prop comes up against this lip here so the second table doesn't smash you. I had a guy that I knew, he was working on one of these one time. And uh, the old 1065s, the the engine was underneath the second table and he was working on it and uh the engine he didn't put that safety prop on and the cylinder was leaking off and it leaked down on top of him didn't kill him or nothing these tables aren't very heavy but he was pinned in there for a while till somebody come along to fire it up and then told him to get his arms out of the fan and everything and he had to fire the engine up and raise the second table up to get him out of there he was cramped up for quite a while so anyway and then the other thing if they're not hauling big bills it's not going to have won't have this and it won't have this i don't think it'll have this this is a helper for the big bills because the big bills are heavier so 
So you're going to have two systems on this. You've got an actual open center system on this for the bell loader, which is this pump, and a closed center system pump for this over here. So I guess the first thing we need to do is we'll hook a gauge on this CompuTech fitting right here and start checking some pressures and see what we got. The second table went up really good there, but I'm not really sure. They said it was kind of intermittent, like kind of scaring me like that orifice is in somewhere and bouncing around and something. That's kind of what's worrying me a little bit. Well, I got to look at this thing. That sure don't seem right. That's standby pressure. I put a zero to 600 gauge on here because I thought, well, that's all I'd need. That's too high for this it is. I mean, geez, this isn't an excavator. Well, guys, I got to get the book out and do some more research on what this one here. So I know what happened. I've got a zero to 600 PSI gauge, which standby pressure shouldn't be that high. But what happened? I should have had a higher gauge on that because these pumps are what they have. They're biased to full stroke on the pump. So what that means, there's a spring in there on one side of that swash plate. And as soon as you... As soon as you stop that engine, that spring's going to rock that swash plate over to full stroke. So when I started it, the pump was at full stroke until the standby pressure from the compensator came back around to stroke the uh, the servo piston, move the uh, back to neutral there to take all that uh, low, or you know the to take the angle off the swash plate. So. So, of course, now i got a gauge here that I had to go get a new gauge this morning. Of course, now the gauge is ruined. So, let me change gauges out real quick. i got a brand new gauge, but I'm going to put a bigger gauge on there anyway. We'll put the, uh, I think maybe we'll first we'll get in the book and see if we can identify. I remember this one had kind of a different way... Most standby pressure usually runs around three, four hundred psi. Uh, I remember reading something on this machine, though it was quite a bit lower than your typical standby pressure setting. So, uh, I got to check that out, and I got to get my little puppy here and make sure she don't wind up in the road. All right, so I always get these guys. Where do you find the service manual? I don't, I don't know. Some of the older guys, I guess, aren't very familiar with the internet and how things work. It's just simple. I'm not trying to berate you or put you down, but it's just as simple as an internet Google search. You type in the machine that you're looking for, the service manual, what kind of service. Say it's a diagnostic troubleshooting manual. Say I need a... Uh, 7430 premium John Deere. I need the codes for this. Put in Google search 7430 John Deere diagnostic service manual. And you Google that and all these results will come up and you click on it and you go, oh, here you go. PayPal, download that. Bam. Then you got a service manual. I don't, I'm sorry. I just don't see what's so hard about finding these books, guys. They're everywhere. So anyways, that being said, that's where I get all these books at. They're, they're everywhere. So anyhow, uh, pump compensator just run the engine at idle. Check the pressure compensator valve by dead heading a function such as load rack or rolling rack. Adjust the valve. So you adjust the valve to 2050 PSI by turning the adjusting screw. So the bottom one's going to be your, uh, where's the load? The top one's going to be the load sense. I need to adjust the usually you adjust the load sense first. You don't adjust it last. It's kind of weird. Disconnect the load sense line one from the manifold and allow the oil to flow to either the tank or a bucket. It may be a good idea to plug the open manifold port, but this is a pressure sensing circuit and there should be not much flow. Okay. So basically they want us to take the load sense line off the compensator and put it in a bucket and then I guess we could cap the load sense port coming out the back of the valve. 
disconnect and install a pressure gauge in line from the pump to the piston pump yeah, port, the back, the gauge port basically. Is that right? Disconnect and install a pressure gauge in the line from the pump to the PPP port, one. So they don't want you to be on the gauge port. They want you to tee into a gauge there. This will allow the pump output to deadhead and not be influenced by anything in the manifold. So I'm going to have to get that straight in my head. Plug the manifold port primarily to keep dirt out. Okay, adjust the flow compensator by turning the adjusting screw in figure one. Connect all lines and recheck the pressure compensator. So what do they want you? They want 20 to 26 PSI, just the flow compensator to 20 to 26 PSI by turning the adjusting screw two in figure one. That's kind of a different way of setting that, huh? Connect all lines and recheck the pressure compensator value as described in step three. So then you go back and check the 2050 PSI setting. Most compensators I've ever adjusted, you've ever, you always want to adjust your, your load sense pressure first, but they're doing exactly the opposite on this one. Connect all lines and recheck the pressure compensator value as described in step three. While the pressure and flow compensator adjustments are independent, and one should not be adjusted in an attempt to influence the other, there may be a slight effect on one or the other. Fine tune the pressure compensator if necessary. So let's go out there and do all of that. So, all right. Okay, so this is obviously our gauge port, but this is going to be, I think this one right here, this is, says triple P on it. So they basically want us to take this fitting off and they want us to put a gauge on it, on the hose end and cap the port on the manifold. Okay, you're basically deadheading the pump is what you're doing. Let me get a screwdriver here. So we'll adjust that first. Fire it up. I got a zero to three thousand. I think is what that one is. Yeah, should be plenty for what we're doing here. We're gonna have to deadhead a function to see what pressure we get in a deadhead, so we could probably do the load rack. Oh, I'm, I gotta get all unclustered here. Hang on, jeez. I'm gonna need both hands here, so put that there. <coughs> yes, I work. So let's go auto manual. Let's deadhead.
I'll keep my gauge in the cab. That's real good on the gauge, ain't it? couple different things here I gotta figure out how I'm gonna I don't know how I'm gonna get how am I gonna get down to that size to put a gauge in it hmm not really sure I know they want you to take the compensator line off right into here and get a bucket okay guys what we got going on is we got the load sense line off we got it capped on the pump we got, I had, to, I had to do this real quick. I couldn't find anything to adapt to this size. What they're doing here is they're isolating the entire valve block from the pump. So you get the pump set right. We're basically deadheading this. So we'll see what happens. We might blow this thing car off. I don't know. Shouldn't. Um, it should neutralize in there still. But we're gonna set this to 20 to 25 PSI is what that thing says. So here we go. Something wrong with this compensator. I can't get it to change. There's something wrong with this compensator. This other plug out. I don't know. I've never 
never seen one have goopy standby pressure the way this one's doing this. I have to clean it out, put it back on there, and see what happens. There's a spool right there. There's a spool, okay. Well, let me clean this up. So, I do the driver somewhere I should have went with my instincts that they've got a typo or something in their book there because that's totally screwy. I've never seen an, a closed center uh, standby pressure set to 20 to 26 PSI. So you go down to the troubleshooting part here and it tells you how the load sense system works. When the hydraulic system is not actuated, the PFC piston pump will remain in low pressure standby mode at only 200 psi i've got it set at around 220 right now okay when a hydraulic function is actuated the pump senses a demand for flow and self-adjusts its output to increase the flow to meet requirements while we maintaining only the pressure required to operate the circuit plus 200 psi that is needed to operate the compensator the pump will work to maintain the required flow under all working conditions of the system okay so what we got to do now is is put the lines back on there because I don't know they got a typo. I've never seen a standby pressure be set at 20 to 26 psi. I think they meant 200 to 260 psi. I, I think that's I think they got it all screwed up. I was really confused. Like what the hell is that all about? And there's no way you're going to set standby pressure. You're not going to have any. Yeah, that's just not right. So um, anyways, I, I'm pretty confident that I've got her set right the way a pressure compensated compensator would be set so let's pull our Josie let's pull our fitting off let's hook her lines back up I gotta find the fitting that I pulled out of that, so I'm Johnny on the spot here. Huh. Now that we know that's set correctly, We'll see what happens when we hook it up.
have for this in here. and 1085s they just had an open center gear pump on them nothing nothing too fancy on them old girls that was too simple center too far you got to get out there and kick the table where it'll come back down I'm gonna deadhead the load rack oh I'm actually raising it up 2100 psi that's what it's supposed to be doing working the way it's supposed to the second table is a single acting cylinder so you're not going to deadhead it That's what it's supposed to be at. close huh that rolling rack slides down when there's hay on it there's no hay on it you don't want to walk underneath that right now so let's uh let's put the old camera here somewhere I'll have to on up that seems about right we're at 2050 right on the button The load rack doesn't go up as fast as the second table. You're not gonna wanna, you don't want that load rack, you want it to have power, but you don't want it screaming back too far. You'll dump your block of hay all over the ground. It has to be controlled. She'll come down a lot quicker though. Run the push off feet out.
I'll explain it while I set it off. Okay, and the purpose, guys. So this pump here is your variable, your variable displacement pump. It's running this valve block here. Okay, so you're gonna have uh, this is your load rack valve right here. This is gonna run the load rack up and down. Okay, and all these have manual overrides on them. Okay, and I don't know how these manual used to be. They oh, she's wanting out. There you go. So most of the time manual overrides you could push the centers in, but I'm not certain how these are actually working on this one. Okay, so you're gonna have a bunch of directional control valves here. Uh solenoid operated directional control valves. So you're gonna have uh load rack directional control valve up and down of course. Uh you're gonna have your Let's see, FM, I'm trying to remember what that means. Fan motor control valve. Actually, that's this one. This is the spikes up and down. There are spikes up there in the table that'll come up. And that way, when you're making, say, you're making a different rail of bells, so you've got four bells, you, you're going to put two in the center. Those spikes will come up right in the middle of the bells. And then, well, that's for, that's if you're not hauling big bells. These guys are hauling big bells, but... If you're hauling small bells, this shoe right here will come up, and what it'll do, it'll kick that bell right up in the middle, and it'll it'll hit both these bells in the middle, and it'll pivot on those spikes and shove them right in the middle. Okay, so so that's your spikes, your fan motor control valve, rolling rack valve here, uh, AX. I can't remember what that one is to be honest with you. So load rack, rolling rack. I'm not, I'm not remembering what the AX is. Auxiliary, maybe? Not really certain what that one is. Um, but anyway, um, all these have some shuttle valves. You'll see an AXCV check valve, second table check valve, uh, fan motor. Uh, this is like a flow control in this one, I think, if I remember right. But uh, this, is your, this is your solenoid cartridge valve that actually, when you flip that handle up in the cab, it allows the hydraulics to go through uh, turns the hydraulics on basically so I think there's this is load rack LRS load rack um, I'm not sure what the S means but I can't remember anyway rolling rack RRRV RRF, rolling rack forward, I'm guessing, and the other one must be rolling rack back. RRB, yeah, okay. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So, um, I think we got her set right, though. I think we're okay there. I'm going to tell him to come get it. i got to put a cap in there where the pressure compensator is, but uh, not 100% sure what their complaint was, but... Everything seems to work actually really well now that I've... Maybe there was something going on with the way that it was set up before because I know I had that set right before. Um, yeah, I mean, sitting there at an idle, I was getting like almost uh, 500 PSI on standby pressure at idle. You know, and that fan motor doesn't start doing that until you get higher RPMs. It starts... It, well, you know, it's, it's spinning faster, so the, I don't know how this uh, thing works how the uh does it work off an engine throttle position sensor and then it ramps up the duty cycle to something to port more oil to the fan motor not really certain i'd have to read the theory of operation on that so anyway uh there's some more hydraulic stuff for you guys oh i wanted to explain something to you on these these have two systems on them. they have an open center system and a closed center system okay this is an open center center gear pump right here it's going over there that is your uh for your bell loader right there and your first table okay but yeah is that first table control valve i think yeah it runs the first table in this right here it's an open center system
and see they got their brake set up on this too for the brake for the for the park brake gp2 that's like gauge port 2 i think blmf bell loader mf i know bl is bell loader bell bell loader motor okay bell loader motor return bell loader motor reverse bell bell loader motor uh when these have a bell motor a regular bell motor on them as a small bell it actually has a chain with a hydraulic motor that picks the bells up and the teeth on the on the bell loader chain pick up the uh pick it up and throw it on the first table okay and then there's going to be this solenoid valve here is probably going to be to raise and lower bell loader down bell loader check valve bell loader motor check valve bell loader up solenoid huh fan huh i don't know what that's all about Anyways, a lot of shit going on here. Lots of things to go wrong, actually.